for the love of wrestling, it's only bloody Rikishi. Oh, stop it, stop it. Oh, no, you. Uh, Manchester, you're too kind. You're too kind. Um, now, I'm going to open this in a slightly unconventional way. There were two things that I couldn't keep my eyes off of as you got in the ring. One of which, I was stood behind you. You've still got buns, my friend. You can still back that up. It's looking good. And the other is a shiny thing on your finger over there. Is that a WWE Hall of Fame ring, sir? Uh, there's your answer right there. Yes. <laughs> but you know what? Before we start this, what is it, an interview or a promo? Or... But I'd like to take this opportunity to say, Manchester, that I've damn missed you guys. It's been 20 plus years since I've been back. And yesterday was so nice to be able to shake hands and just take pictures. That simple, to be able to hear your stories of how I made you smile, how I made you laugh, that's what it really, it's all about, is to be able to come to places like this. Big shout out to Monopoly Events, and for the love of wrestling, to be able to bring an old guy like me that still have the rump shaker to drop somebody's ass when it's time, and just to say, Manchester, acknowledge me. Well, there you have it. Beautiful, beautiful. And, and, and as one of, one of countless fans here who, who grew up watching you, um, whether it was as part of the head shrinkers, all the way through to, to sort of too cool in your time with that and everything in between, just, for us as well, thank you, because it means a lot for us to be able to chat to you and be around you and find out that you are everything you seem to be, if I may say. You are absolutely who you are, and it's delightful. Well, you know, in reality, what you see it on, on TV, I'm kind of that guy, but then I'm not. The, the guy that you see on TV is a big 450-pound, blonde-haired Samoan that just loves to have fun. But also when it's time to whoop that ass and take care of business, I can be that guy too. But the real guy that walks through my doors is the same guy that walks in there and wash dishes. <laughs> it's the same guy that walks in there and help my wife with the laundry. It's the same guy that walks and do the chores of the family because that's where responsibility as being able to teach your young ones where it starts in that living room the squared circle is where it all happens for the bloodline and that's why you see where we're at now family first yeah also you know family is important without a doubt, doubt family is important so yeah. in any business that you are in be it professional wrestling but cricket you know football whatever the case it may be Without that family support, your success, your whatever the case you may be, all the money in the world doesn't mean shit. Yes. And also, I'd like to point out, you had a huge round of applause when you talked about helping with the housework. So clearly, their partners welcome, are welcome. not helping with the housework. So yeah, we're, watch, we're watching you guys. Um, yeah, I, the, one of the things I found is, and it was similar with uh, Scott signing yesterday, but you've done so much, it's very hard for me to almost find one particular thing to talk about, yeah. especially now I have the mental image of you in your thong doing the dishes. Um, but um, <laughs> you... I, I, it was such a... Such a uh, careful there, my friend. Sorry. <laughs> Be careful, you're right in the ring with me. <laughs> right. I want to make it very clear. He keeps I, tapping on the thong all the time, you know? I, 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 the whole thing I'm going to say is, I think, I don't want to speak I'm about... I'm bare ass Manchester. underneath these yeah. pants right now, so... Just to let you know, you on know? Be, on behalf of Manchester... And, and catering fed me some chili and beans back there, so you can imagine, you know, the after effects from eating a bowl of chili back there. I'm sure, I think nobody in Manchester wants to see that happen today. No one wants to see the stink... <laughs> 
Uh, now I know okay. why Val gave me this guy. I think the fans want me to start doing, you know, an autograph signing, giving out stink faces now. <laughs> Do you, do you get people asking you for that? Do you, you know what I requesting? do? I do, you know, but you know, when they come through there, a lot of times they do. Can, can, you, can I buy a stink face from you? I mean, how do you put a price tag on that? What a, well, I, we auction it. I, I, auction what, it. What do we bid? Where do we start in bid? It's, it's, <laughs> 50. 50. 50, 50, 50. Do we get, do we get 60? 60, 60, 60. 60, do we 100. get 70? 100, 100, do we get a million? Do we get a million, do we get a million? Million point five, million point five. <laughs> million point five. <laughs> oh my goodness. What is life? But yeah, so that was such a big moment because you have had many identities. Yeah. You, you, you were, you were obviously part of the Head Shrinkers and the Simone SWAT team. You were, um, you, you made a difference. Yeah. Um, there was a bit where they figured you couldn't understand shoes. That was a weird fortnight. Um, you were the Sultan. Um, and then everything was very different when you found the look. I would really like to know, whose idea was that? Did they come to you? Did you go to them? Or was it a bit of both? Well, let me, let me go ahead and pull the curtain down on Karish, uh, Rikishi's career. Uh, you know, it all starts from training. When you come into any business, you're trained to understand what it is on the inside and on the outside. You learn to be able to perfect your craft as far as in the squared circle. In this squared circle, as we're sitting here, underneath these rings are metal up underneath here. And there's three-quarter plywood that's, that's uh, here with the little three-quarter pads. These poles that you see around the ring, it's all steel poles. The ropes here, you got steel ropes that are inside these uh, covered uh, white tape here. And so as professional wrestlers, you have to learn how to be able to protect yourself, to be able to dance with the next person. Because in our sport, we don't have time off. We go two, 300 days out the year. Now, I'm talking about as far as in the attitude era. There's a big difference from today, you know. But you learn how to perfect your craft. And for me, my uncle's Alfonsica, High Chief Peter Maivia, always used to say, learn to perfect the craft. The only thing that you concentrate on is to be able to get in there, get a job, to be able to feed the birds in the nest at home. And so to me, that was the only real thing in my mind that I had to do whatever it take to take care of my family. And I was that guy to be able to do whatever. I didn't, a lot of guys, they care about what we call gimmicks. Well, I wanna tell the world this, and I always say this first. Before I was a professional wrestler, I was a Samoan. So if you know our culture, our culture were very hardworking people. We're very humble people. We're very uh, uh, church faith type of people. And very, very like family oriented, very, very close. So with this type of uh, teaching, as I come into the professional wrestling business, my mindset was to be able to do what I had to do. This is where the change of characters. I probably had like five or however many characters, but every time that character opportunity came, for me it was a blessing because Vince McMahon and WWE, WWF back in the day, they could have just said, okay, Mr. Fatu, We've done all we can with you. It's time to kick you out the door. And so I wasn't, I was fortunately to give them an opportunity. Okay, this didn't work, and this is, was always the conversation. We're going back to the, to the chalkboard. Now, how you get to that? Well, I'll tell you. It's from being a guy in the back locker room. 
a guy that respects everybody, a guy that knows his role, a guy when he comes into the ring, you can rest assured that I'm going to make you look like a million dollars if you're the guy that we're going with. Understand your purpose, and your purpose in this uh, professional wrestling ring is to know your role. As the wheel turns, you'll get your turn. Six gimmicks later, born Rikishi. So now my relationship with the WWE, it started from my uncle's 75 plus years. And when I got my opportunity, it wasn't because it was given to me. It was because a guy that believed in his work, a guy that loved professional wrestling, a guy that loves his fans. And that has what brought me here today and took me into the future of WWE Hall of Famer because of you, the fans. So thank you. <sighs> I, I promised I wouldn't get too emotional, but you're setting me off. I um, try to write a book. Oh, it's, I, could you repeat that into the microphone, sir? I said I, I, I think it's time to write a book. We'll do pre-sales. We'll, 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 we'll get them on sale. I think so. If you need a ghostwriter. I, you know, sure. I just feel like, you know, utilizing what, what am I doing now with the second part of my life in the wrestling business? The second part is I'm running around chasing my grandkids, all 13 <laughs> of my grandkids now. And it's, it feels like I'm in a wrestling match with those guys. And to be able to come and do, you know, meet and grits like this, you know, I live for this stuff here. To be able to hear you guys' stories and just to simply shake hands and say thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Because uh, when you're living it, you don't appreciate to do. You're busy, you're in that moment. Yeah. So having, even having a chance to write a book and reminisce, you remember all these things that were magnificent moments, but at the time you maybe couldn't appreciate them properly, I'm sure. Uh, you know, this... When my thought of when it's time to write a book, I want to tell the stories of what the fans felt of me. Mm -hmm. I've always known what I felt for you guys <laughs> was the respect level that I needed to give you guys, the performance that I needed to give you, because I know, like my parents, you know, they work hard, nine to five job. I don't come from a rich family. They had, you know, they taught us work, uh, work, work, work. That's my father and my mother. My mother prays for us. And then to be, a, get out there and to simply be a good person. Just be a good person in this world. And you watch the difference that one person can make. And through professional wrestling, I've hoped that, you know, I've accomplished that. To let my fans know uh, that at the end of the day, a Samoan dynasty We've given you every single thing that we got for 75 plus years in the WWE. So I say, it's okay to raise the finger up for a different purpose. Speaking of raising hands, the literal hardest working man of all wrestling, and um, can you go grab a, a question from this young man for a start? Do a stink face. That is not a question. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Why did I know that was going to come up? Hi, everyone. <laughs> where, where are we at? Okay. Uh, How are you doing? First, well, first statement was just that my friend Abby loves Rikishi. Like... <laughs> I, Mwah. when we were building up to coming here today, she kept saying, I love Rikishi. So, Abby, stand up. Abby, stand up. Abby, stand up. When, Abby, this is your moment. Up. Let's Abby. Abby. Thank you, Abby. Big Rikishi fam. Um, my question is a little bit more specific. It was just, i big fan of China and obviously worked for several times like throughout your career. One of my first memories is you squashing her um, with... Hardcore Holly and Chris Jericho. So my just question is, I hear a lot of different, like, conflicting views of China backstage, but 
What are your memories of China? What are your memories of China, sir? Oh my goodness, the eighth wonder of the world. She was wim women power. I mean, China was there back in the day to where not too many women back there that's going around just body slamming a male dominated sport and just setting the record straight. And she was uh, one of my good friends. Uh, damn sure gone too soon. I feel like, you know, China needs to take her rightful seat into the Hall of Fame. Do you agree? I mean, and you know, she was a, I can only speak my experience with her, but she was a loving person, a very, very kind, and a lot of the new cats that are coming to the, you know, that day of the show, getting a tryout, whatever the case it may be. She was that type of person that, you know, was easy to talk to, that wanted to, you know, give a helping hand to the next generation that's coming through. And she loved, obviously we know she loves like stacking those uh, plates of weights on and just racking. I've never seen anybody get in there and just uh, when, <laughs> when I come to the gym sometimes and I see China in the gym, I'll turn around, make a U-turn and walk back out. <laughs> Because I know she's going to embarrass a lot of the guys in there. But, you know, a heart of gold. And I hope, like, you know, one day that they do uh, finally, uh, you know, induct this uh, wonderful, wonderful woman, uh, a beautiful icon, into the WWE Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah, China, China. You got Ant here, go ahead. I mean, Raymond Reigns Reigns t-shirt as well, of all things. Okay. I want to ask you, sir... Um, what was your favorite match to be in and why? Wow. I thank you for being here as well. Man, uh, I, you know what? I, I'd have to... One of my favorite matches, that's very hard to answer, but I'd have to say with Yokozuna. Oh, yeah. And I'll tell you why, because there's nothing like getting into the ring with your family members. And to be able to, you know, pull pranks on them, All right? And so when I was uh, the Sultan, of course, the Sultan, that mask that I used to wear was made out of leather. So whenever I would say something, you can never see me laughing or, you know, talking up underneath there. So when me and Yoko would wrestle against each other, he would hit me on the side of my, my ears and I would just sit there and laugh because he would look at me. I wouldn't acknowledge him. And then finally, when, you, you, when the big man will go, like, for instance, to drop a leg on me, I'm supposed to lay there and take the leg, but I'll end up moving out of the way and just laughing my ass off underneath the mask. Now he's getting mad. And I, You're making me tired now. So finally, when he finally did get me, the big man at 700-something seven pounds, Boy, he give me that splash in the corner. I wasn't going nowhere. That was going. So I'd have to say, uh, Yokozuna. He's he's up there with one of my favorite matches. We're remembering Yoko yeah. as well. What a man. Here we go. Yeah, hi, Ricky Sheep. How are you doing, sir? Was, my bit was a big fan of you, by the way. Thank he's you. Right next to me with the. I acknowledge necklace. you. So I got to ask, did you do it for the Rock? <laughs> How about I say this? I, I did it for my kids' college tuition. <laughs> I think that's a fair enough answer. That's perfect. That's right. flawless. Go ahead. All right. Hello. Um, I've got two questions. Okay. Um, how much fun was it doing stink face on Vince McMahon? That was fun! <laughs> that was for the people. <laughs> And the second question is, is there any truth to the rumors that you may be guest refereeing your sons in a match? Oh, whoa, 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 easy, easy, easy there, easy, <laughs> easy, <laughs> you'll find out. Uh, all you got to do is log on to my podcast, Rikishi Fatu Off the Top. 
Follow me there and you'll find out. That's Rikishi Fatu off the top. Right here. You got it right here, baby. Rikishi yep. Fatu off the top. Is that potentially available on iTunes? Oh, all all uh, platforms. You know, anywhere you get your... Yeah. <laughs> Look for it online. Go uh, ahead, Ant. I'll be, oh, I'll be giving away some thongs. You remember him from the Albert Hall tour? <laughs> Hi, Dad. Oh. How are you, sir? Yeah, good, thank you. Um, my question is, what was going through your mind when you were on top of the Hell in a Cell, uh, about to be choke slammed off? I, I, I have no mind. <laughs> I, I must have been out of my mind to do something like that. Um, you know, uh, in the Hell in a Cell was, uh, as a little kid, how many we all remember the Hall of Famer Jimmy Superfly Snooker. Okay, so back in the day, we see that iconic splash off the top rope from Madison Square Garden. Well, I was actually there, but I was a young, you know, snot no kid in the back locker room just causing havoc. But when I seen that Uncle Jimmy come off the top rope, I used to tell myself, if in case I ever get an opportunity, something like that, that I would take that risk to be able to be like, you know, Uncle Jimmy. But I didn't know at 455 pounds, that's when that was gonna happen. And uh, you know what, it, it, uh, you gotta be out your mind when you're doing high maneuvers like that from a, you know, 50 feet high cage. And you gotta realize too, the, that your bumps may not go the right way. You might take that fall, and that'll possibly be your last fall. And so the risk that you take, you got to be prepared when things like this happen. And so I wanted to do something like this. And when I got the opportunity, there it is. And, you know, to this day, you know, my family were pissed off at me for taking that chance to be able to, you know, possibly kill myself. So, but you know what you signed up for and it's called professional wrestling. Hello, Rikishi. How are you doing, sir? I'm fantastic, thank you. Nice to meet you. My uh, question for you is, um, is actually on about the Hell in a Cell moment where you got choke slammed off. Is it true that some family members can forgive you for doing that spot? Is it true that some family members cannot forgive you for doing that spot? Or have they kind of made peace? Well, you know what? I, I, I say that I roughed a few feathers in the family. Um, but again, what, what, what family doesn't argue? Tell me, if you tell me where a perfect family in this world is, I say we all go see those people and, and learn from them. But, you know, everybody wants the best for your family member. We all do. But... You know, sooner or later in life, you got to make your own decisions. You got to be able to pave your own way and, you know, make your own choices to do what you do. And I chose to do that, and it is what it is. But the, the beautiful thing is I'm still here breathing and standing to be able to tell you guys the story. Without a doubt. Yeah. Anthony. What up, Oos? What's up, Oos? All right, Oos. I What's acknowledge up, you. Uh, always been a big fan, big fan of all the Bloodline stuff. Um, we're just wondering, we haven't seen you on TV. I was just thinking, are we going to see you make an appearance with the Bloodline? And who we got, Jimmy or Jay at Mania? Who are we going for out the boys? I've, wow. I've, got, I've got to ask, it's got to be tough on some hand seeing your boys fight, but you've got to be excited about Mania. I'll tell you, it's not tough for me. <laughs> I'm, you know, as their father, I've been seeing them fight all their lives there. The only difference is they're fighting together and they're getting paid for it. And so as an entertainer, as a father, okay, entertainer side, I'm happy they're, they're getting that opportunity. Because for me, from a fan standpoint, like that's like a dream match. All you guys we've ever seen was tag team, tag team, tag team. Now we finally get to see you know, the brother versus the brother. It's like when we seen the greatest Brent, the hitman Hart, go up against his brother, Owen Hart. You imagine, you guys remember the great matches they had. And so, 
you think about the boys, this is probably a father conversation I'd have. You remember how Brett and Owen had a match in WrestleMania. I want you guys to take a good look at that match. And then I want you to ask yourself, can we top that match? Can so, we top it? I think, yes. Right? And so it's just, uh, you know, from a wrestling standpoint, a wrestler standpoint, you want to you wanna stamp your mark. The mark is already there as far as in the family. But now you're going to be able to perform as single competitors against each other. That's going to be a treat to see for the fans. And it's going to be definitely uh, a historical moment uh, for our family personally. WrestleMania moment. So here's a tricky question. Jimmy versus Jay, who's your pick to win? What do you want me to say, yeet? <laughs> or do you want me to say no yeet? Okay. I think my answer would be, we all eat. Yeet, no yeet equals we all eat. That's why the way I look at it. Because right now, I don't ever, when we go to dinner, I don't ever pull out my credit card no more, nor do I have to. I think it's about time that, you know, the boys there, they do what they do now. You know, I, I, I just pray every time when they're on the road, that they're able to get back home to their families, get back home to their kids, and on a safe note. At the end of the day, we're, you know, we're doing this yeet, no yeet. Uh, I, I actually asked my kids the one day, uh, Jay, I said, what the hell does yeet mean? <laughs> that goes to show you, where I'm not gonna tell my age, but there it is, so. I think it's gonna be a good match for WrestleMania, but there's, there's just a piece missing in that match, you mm. think? Uh, could, what could that be? I have no idea. What, what do you guys think? There's a piece missing. You got Jay versus Jimmy, but there's just that, ah. What's that? Is it hashtag we want Rikishi? That's hashtag we want Rikishi. It's funny how this pops in your mind, you know? Um, you, I'm assuming you talk about this on your podcast. Did you mention Rikishi Fatu off the top, available on iTunes and yeah. anywhere else? Uh, Anthony, go ahead. Hi, Rikishi. I hope you enjoy Manchester. What up, Oz? What up? Uh, so last week, me and my partner went to watch the Iron Claw in the cinemas. Okay. Um, my question to you is, would you like to see a Samoan Dynasty film? As I would really Ooh. like to see one of them. Oh, what do we think? Well, I don't know. Do you guys want to see one? But who are going to get to play The Rock? There's no actors that look like... <laughs> <laughs> I'll just tell the family, we'll hire everybody from Manchester. <laughs> yeah. We'll do that. Hey, I think... Uh, you know, uh, first of all, that, that movie, uh, The Iron Claw with the Von Erichs, if you guys got a chance to see it or you didn't go get a chance to see it, please take time to. Kind of shows you behind the scenes of from within the family. And, you know, our family is, uh, uh, it would be a hell of a story but it would show you more so a lot of church. It'll show you a lot of luau's. Uh, it'll show you a lot of men uh, working hard and the culture of you know the females and the mothers taking care of the family. Uh, it'll show you the preachers in the family, the high chiefs in the family, the real head of the tables in the family. And I think it, you know, it's, it's due after 75 plus years. Damn it, we see Samoan Dynasty all the time on TV, but it would be nice to not only see their, you know, the stories of their lives, their personal lives, to be able to open a door and bring you into our home so you can see this mega legacy family of how we really are. Some is beautiful, some is funny, some is not too funny. Because at the end of the day, there's no family 
no family, and I want to repeat this, that is perfect. You got to be able to go through your ups and downs to be able to make it turn around and come back and understand where exactly you messed up and where exactly you need to go. So I think, yes, in the future, it is time to have a Samoan Dynasty family movie. We are here. Well, I'm, I will level with you. I would stay here indefinitely, and I feel that we could do this many times and still to scratch the surface. It is time for us to wrap this one up. Do you have any parting words for the people? Uh, it's just uh, simply thank you. Just those two words. It, it, it reaches farther than anything can say. Thank you. I wish there was a word that's stronger than that, but understand that we've given you everything that we got. Every time we came out to square, going to the squared circle, that know that we respect you fans and we understand that you the, tr you the fans are the real one, number ones. Okay? Thank you. For one last time, May us, may we please acknowledge you, oh. the Hall of Famer, Rikishi! Uh